Hello, and thank you for joining our webinar on Section 23B, Supporting Summer Learning Programs. My name is Tomas Soria. I'm the Director of School Partnerships at Michigan Virtual. I've been with Michigan Virtual for over 10 years. I'm a graduate of Michigan State, go green. And my role is to support K through 12 students, staff, and administrators with technology-based tools and distance learning opportunities. For those that are not familiar with our organization, Michigan Virtual is a nonprofit 501c3 our mission is advancing both learning and teaching through research, practice, and partnership. We work with Michigan schools, districts, ISDs, and the Department of Education on various education organizations to collaborate and help improve learning outcomes. This webinar will provide you guidance on Public Act 3, specifically Section 23B, to support summer learning options, credit recovery, and before and after school programming. Over the next 20 minutes, we'll discuss how to apply for state funds, help meet application deadline of April 15th, 2021. And we also will share learning options that support student learning recovery, SEL and mental health supports. To better explain how to access these funds, I reached out to Tammy Jackson. Tammy spent 31 years at East Jordan High School first as a teacher, then an assistant principal and athletic director, and finally as a principal for the last 18 years. Along with her extensive tenure and school administration, Tammy served on the MHSAA Representative Council and MASSP's Board of Directors, including two years as president. Currently, Tammy is on the MASSP staff, where her primary responsibilities is supporting new and aspiring principals. Additionally, Tammy provides education consulting services to educational organizations across the state. Thank you for joining us today, Tammy. I'll kick this over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. I appreciate it. You know, I, as you said, that my responsibilities right now really center around supporting principals in the roles that they do. And I have to tell you, in the last two weeks, as I have been reading the um, MDE documents on this grant that they have. Um, provided for schools, I couldn't help but think that these poor principals are trying to um, prep up and get ready to enjoy some spring break, um, being as though they haven't had much of a summer and um, are spending most of their weekends contract tracing or doing something related to COVID-19. And, and as they were getting ready to take that break, all this information was just pouring out about this grant with an April 15th deadline. And regardless if your spring break was last week or this week, that's a, a really short deadline. And so um, I took it upon myself to just do some research into this information and kind of tear it down and prepare myself to share it and make it a little bit easier to understand for principals. So that's kind of where I am. And so with our time today, um, I just want to share with what principals across the state are saying. And I want to talk a little bit about the um, funding and then how to access the funding in the application. So um, MASSP did a survey of school membership schools after the first semester of this year to just try and determine where schools were with their pass and failure rates of students under the circumstances. And what they found is 92% of the schools that responded are reporting a much higher than normal failure rate after the first semester. And if you look at these charts, it really is ironic because it shows that students who were in the hybrid situation actually failed at a, at a quicker rate than those who were in person or who were all um, distance learning. Um, really, there wasn't much of a difference in all three of those settings when you really look at the data. And it just showed that um, while schools hadn't doubled their failure rate, they were darn close to um, doing that in in all those situations. And so all schools across the state are really in the same situation and where we don't talk about failure because we're talking maybe of not earning credit. So we're talking middle or lower level. We're still talking at them reporting students who are just not um, ready to move on to their next level. Um, and and the, the learning gaps have just gotten larger. So, so, what, um, so I wanna talk to you about today is the three programs that are um, Michigan has determined to be eligible for the funding under the Public Act of 2021, Section 23B. So there's three programs that schools can um, develop, apply for, and access. One of them is a summer learning program, which is meant for students in K through eighth grade that requires in-person learning. 
um, for a period of eight weeks. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. The second program is credit recovery, and that's for students in nine through 12th grades. Um, and that program can be distance or in person, and it can be taught in an asynchronous or an asynchronous design. For those programs, you are eligible for 550 per eligible student. And that doesn't mean per student who attends, that means the number of students in your building who could attend, um, who qualify to attend. And then you can access 100 additional funds per child um, if you are innovative. And we'll talk about that in a minute too. So the last program to talk about is the before and after school program. We call it the academic um, remediation programs. And many schools right now have programs that they're running. And um, ironically, those programs could go back and qualify for this funding if they meet the criteria. And if they don't, with some small changes, they could meet the criteria moving forward for the remainder of the school year. So there's a lot of information on this one slide and I'm not gonna read it all. I'm just gonna briefly um, explain that in the remediation program, your, your students do have to be in person and they have to be in person for eight weeks. Now, MDE does not state how many hours per day they have to be in session, nor do they even specify that they have to be in session every single day. They say a week is Monday through Friday and in that time you must be in person for some period of time on some of those days. And um, you don't have to run them consecutive. So schools really have an opportunity to um, take a week off for, cert for the holidays, maybe the 4th of July, or maybe go two weeks on, one week off, whatever it works best for their staffing. Um, and to have those programs qualify for additional funding, if you incorporate social emotional learning, outdoors um, or adventure components, STEM, project-based learning, um, if you collaborate with public services in some way, like social, social workers or um, other agencies, if you offer robotics, theater, and if you partnership with a college, all those things would qualify you for that extra $100. Now in the high school credit recovery, um, again, you don't have to be in person. You can do that in a hybrid situation at a completely online a situation. You could have an open lab where kids come when they need to come. You could staff that lab with um, staff in the, in the course subject areas. And then again, with all of those extra things, you can qualify for the money. Now, one thing I want to say when it comes to credit recovery is that an issue that, that schools often have when they use their teachers to teach summer school, well, well, let's first back up a little bit. Right now, teachers are feeling really tired. They're feeling really stressed out and they've been working so hard. And, and a lot of them are not willing to teach school in the summer this year and schools across the state are saying that. But what I wonder is if a teacher would be more willing to help out with a summer learning program if they didn't have to come every day or if the hours were not all day long. Um, and most importantly, how about if they didn't have to develop the curriculum or deliver the lessons or do the grading? What if you used a third person a party with that, a vendor party that gave you all of that information and then your teachers could just be there to support students learning, kind of facilitate the process versus deliver it. When you have a K through 12 program and um, which you often have are teachers who are unwilling to give a credit in a course that they taught um, by allowing students to complete anything less than what they taught in the schools or completed in the regular school year. So that sometimes causes issues as well. And then that last program, that after school or before um, school program, you can actually apply for up to $25,000 if your program is focused on remediation and it's an extension of your current instructional delivery. In other words, you're not teaching an enhancement. Um, you're teaching, you're just helping students get through the curriculum that you have in your school at the time. So what I did is I put together these three guidance documents and there's a, there's a, a different document for every one of the three phases. And that document explains what has to be in the application for any of those three programs. And I think on the next slide, you'll see that there is a, a link where you can pull those documents up or access them as well as a QR code. So if you snap a picture of that, whether you do it now or, what, um, now or at a later time, you're gonna have access to those documents. And again, what they're gonna do is guide you through the application process for any three of those scenarios. So lastly, I just wanna take you quickly through the application because I can't tell you how many hours I spent trying to figure out where the application really was. And so if I can save you even five minutes trying to locate this application, that would be a good thing. So the application actually sits out in your monthly learning plan submission. 
um, site. So you have every month schools have to go online and they have to update their learning plan. In the month of April for that update, if you scroll down um, to actually the bottom of that application, and you can go ahead and do that for me if you would, um, you will see that the application sits right there. And if you just quickly go through those next slides for me, you'll see that there's three, just kind of keep scrolling and there's, there's th a place for all three of those programs. And what you do is you simply answer the questions they have asked. What that guiding document will do for you is it will help you answer those questions because I've broken it down by question. What, what the question is and what must be included in that question or then that answer of that question in order to qualify for that particular program. Um, unfortunately, you can't cut from a document and paste it into these spots. I don't understand that, but, but you can't do it. So you're gonna have to type it live, but if you write it out in advance, obviously that's gonna be a lot easier to do. And then you can just transfer the information into the application and you can submit it. And you are supposed to hear pretty quick about if you've qualified and for how much money you have qualified for. You can also um, save the program and go back to it if you're not ready to complete it at the time. Um, and then submit it when you are ready to submit it. Wow, well, thank you, Tammy. And, and it seems like, you know, they, they, uh, they don't make it easy for, for us as we're like copying and pasting and trying to gather all this information. But I think that you helped uh, a lot of administrators kind of plan uh, as well as providing them some great resources. And we're also gonna make those uh, resources that you provided available to schools on a website that I'll share at the end of, of our presentation today. And, um, you know, and, and I'm sure many people know that, uh, you know, Michigan Virtual, we've been, you know, providing online courses for students in the summer for many years. And that's through partnerships with our local districts. Um, and we plan to continue to provide that support, you know. But before I share some programs that may qualify for that, I'd like to acknowledge that not all online courses are the same. And at Michigan Virtual, we strive to focus on quality instruction and student outcomes. And our focus is on learning recovery and earning the credit is just part of that process. You know, my son, he's a fifth grader and he found success in learning online. And much of that is due to the feedback and the, and the, the quality of, of support that he was getting from his online teachers. And at Michigan Virtual, our teachers are trained in the pedagogy of instructing online. And the focus is providing students with personalized feedback to meet learning objectives and close those learning gaps. So our courses go through a rigorous process of uh, done by an outside agency called Quality Matters, where we review the, the courses and content. And integrated into each course is an orientation model, uh, module, excuse me, that acclimates students to the online learning environment. And none of this is possible without partnerships through Michigan schools. So, you know, we, you know, we don't award credit. You can't graduate from Michigan virtual. So, um, you know, here's a couple programs to consider. And, you know, Michigan virtual offers up to 10 weeks of summer learning. And during the school year, we support students in grades six through 12. But in the summer, we primarily focus on courses that are commonly delivered in high school. Students take summer courses for a variety of reasons. There's some that are trying to improve a grade or maybe make room in their schedule next year by taking a prerequisite for the fall. And our goal is to deliver high quality learning experiences. And we do so by, by providing a trained online teacher with each course. And you know, we also have a subset of courses that are specific to students that need re remediation and those are called essentials. Uh, the courses cover the MMC high school graduation requirements and are tailored to each student. So instead of having a student complete an entire course of algebra, Essentials recognizes what students already know by offering short assessments prior to each unit. And if a student demonstrates competency, then the Michigan virtual teacher will advance them to the next unit. And you know, just like you said, Tammy, I've already had several conversations with schools that are asking us to partner with them, not to replace their summer program, but come alongside with them and help support them in the areas that they may not have teachers to, to help them with, whether it's a language or a course that they just don't have a summer school teacher. So we're looking to partner with schools to help, uh, you know, students stay on, on, on target to graduate with their cohort. And rest assured, you know, our courses come with quality and uh, caring teachers that will support and motivate those students through their, their, their learning experience. And if those students have an IEP or a 504 accommodation, please tell us, you know, we wanna support those students' unique needs. 
Here's a couple other unique programs uh, that are gonna be available and, and much of it at no cost to schools. And um, you know, for, for Michigan families at no cost this summer, we're offering a program called EdReady Math. And it's an adaptive technology program that through a short diagnostic targets knowledge gaps and generates a personalized study path designed to help students get ready for their next level in math in the fall. And it's a great program to add to your summer learning plans. It probably might help out with that, that innovative component that Tammy talked about where you can embed this into some of that summer program. It's available for grades four through 12. And uh, we have a customized dashboard option if, if, you're, if you're interested in that as well. Um, and last, in partnership with the governor's office and our SEL content creators, Michigan Virtual developed the Michigan Cares Portal. And this space has been available for about a year now, and it houses hundreds of lessons designed to help children in grades K through 12. Each SEL lesson correlates with an age appropriate parent lesson that offers tips for having conversations with your students. All content is aligned to CASEL, which is the collaborative for academic and social emotional learning. And they are the national recognized governing body on SEL content and programs. Michigan families can gain access to this content at no cost for the remainder of the school year. And if a school were interested in a customized program, we can make this available to you at no cost over the summer, providing you the opportunity to share specific lessons and topics. Of all the programs I shared, this program is, I believe, the most critical to help address student mental health and the trauma that students have experienced over this past year. So, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and a special thanks to Tammy for providing us that guidance on section 23B. Uh, I encourage you to review the documents she's created and visit our website at michiganvirtual.org slash section 23B. And there you'll find information, um, information from today's presentation and you'll find a form that if you'd like to have an appointment with me to discuss your summer plans, I'd be happy to meet with you. Thank you all and I look forward to hearing from you.